continuing forward with Elizabeth Warren, uh, too, is uh, let me preface by saying this. I did not watch the debates. Uh, I have not watched the debates since about November. Uh, that's the last really debate that I watched. Um, and because they, I, I just don't see them being worthwhile. I, the, the, the questions end up being bullshit. It all ends up being like this commercial for democracy, kind of, but not really. Like, uh, I think what you, what you should encourage is if you want to support a particular candidate, we should be encouraging people not to take these uh, constant sound bites uh, or these 30 second answers. If you want to have a debate, you should have a very specific debate. Um, I think the structure of the debates need to completely change. You should talk, you should talk about it in terms of subject matter. Uh, like you should have a debate about healthcare, you should have a debate about foreign policy, and kind of keep it focused a little bit more. And then I think, you know, instead of them being these three hour fucking political soap operas, they end up being something a little bit more worthwhile where you can get a, you can get a, a better understanding of what and why uh, these candidates believe in what they believe in. Um, so, uh, I have stopped watching the debate, so every so often I'll, I'll, I'll catch a clip or two uh, of, of that, um, of the debates, uh, and uh, so, you know, I watched one with, uh, with Warren and Bloomberg, uh, oh my god, that was a huge yawn for absolutely no fucking reason, I guess I'll continue drinking more coffee. Um... Yeah, I watched uh, a, a clip of, uh, of Warren kind of going after Bloomberg. I already knew that it was going to be a shit show with Bloomberg in the debates, that he bought his way into the debates. He, 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 he spent all this money on a bunch of these, like, anti-Sanders, anti-everybody else fucking ads that if you don't know anything about Mayor Bloomberg, right, like, if you don't know his stop and frisk policy or just the fucking atrocious way that he's treated women and the racist shit that he said. Like, he's basically, he's basically Trump with a fucking D by his name. That's all Bloomberg is. But if you don't know that, and the only thing that you see, because you watch a bunch of fucking boob tube, and, you, and, and, you're, and you're watching CBS every Monday, and they run Bloomberg ads, you just see the anti-Sanders shit, and you go, oh man, these are super compelling. Because here's the thing, his ads are kind of super fucking compelling. Right? Like, I watched him and I was like, damn, this guy's a good fucking huckster. This guy's a real good huckster. Like, whoever's making those ads are real fucking good at it. Like, they are fucking evil marketing geniuses. Like, they make those ads look really fucking good. So, Bloomberg buying his way into the debates is kind of, like, it seems normal. Because, again, if you, if you are not on the pulse of things, it's going to be difficult for you. To, to decipher that information because we're, we are not living in a culture that encourages deciphering that sort of information. Um, you know, like we, we saw that on, uh, on on The View when AOC recently was on The View and uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, uh, who I like, I like her. I, you know, I, I disagree with some of the things that she says. I, uh, uh, some you know, uh, so, uh, sometimes I disagree with the way she goes about doing things, but I like her, I support her, I think for, for the most part she is, uh, she is a, a, a net positive for the progressive movement, for, for the people's movement, um, but, you know, she was like, should Bloomberg be able to buy into the debate, she was like, no, uh, and, you know, fucking, what's her name, uh, Joy, whatever, Joy Behar, Joy Be is it Joy Behar, whoever that fucking lady is on The View, I can't remember her name. She bugs the shit out of me. Um, the the only other one that I know is uh, Megan McCain and uh, Whoopi Goldberg, and then there's some sunny lady. I don't watch The View. I just end up catching clips of it. Uh, but I but it's basically, she was like, "Well, it's good though. It's good that he he's paying his own way. He's not taking any donations from the people. Um, he's kind of paving his own way to the debates." 
and uh, and it's like sure, I guess, uh, but I would rather have somebody that's funded by the people as it fucking should be, and not corporations and lobbyists and have money and special interests. And she was like, well, he's not funded by anybody. He's just funded by himself. And it's like, great. So he wants to lead 350 million people and fight for himself? I'm sorry, but aren't, are, are we trying to vote narcissism 2020 with Bloomberg? Is that what the fuck we're doing? Like, it's, an, it's still an insane fucking argument. But he bought his way into the debates, and really what it shows, um, and uh, you should listen to the interview that I ha- did with uh, Nick Marana of uh, Movement for People's Party on my podcast, Happy Cable Talk, because he basically talks about how the DNC and the RNC are for-profit companies. They are for-profit corporations that run our elections. That's why, that's why they're, there's a two-party system. Right? Because it's a for-profit company that run our elections. Um, and and Bloomberg buying his way, where the DNC essentially changed the rules right before the debates, is proof of that. And if you are not on the pulse of things, you will you will be swayed into thinking that this is a good thing because billionaires should be able to do that. You earned your right to purchase an election. And it's like, no, you fucking didn't. You earned the right to run the race like everybody else, you fucking bastard. Like, what are you fucking talking about? So, um, I'm going to do a a bigger look into Bloomberg uh, because I don't think we're done with him. And I'll I'll, I'll get to that in a moment as well. Uh, But I don't think we're done with him after this debate. Um, so Elizabeth Warren went after him about these NDAs that, uh, women that have been sexually accosted or sexually assaulted in his company have signed these NDAs to say that they won't talk about it or sue Bloomberg. And, uh, you know, Elizabeth Warren fucking went after him for that. And I mean, it was a strong show. I, I would definitely say that she fucking handled it very strongly. Um. She basically said, he basically uh, responded with, uh, well, you know, some women like me. Like, that's what Bloomberg said. And then she was like, really? Like, you can't just fucking say some women like me and still continue to, like, trash women. Uh, And, like, that's not a fucking thing you do, man. Just apologize for the dumb, shitty things that you've said. And, And then he goes, and then he goes, well, you know, none of these women have anything against me. At most, it might have been that they didn't like a joke that I made or something. And it's like, oh, is it? Oh, that's it? That's the, that's the whole thing? It's just you made a joke? Hey, you know who else makes uh, dumb, shitty jokes? Trump. So the Democratic Party just let a, uh, a, a, a blue dog billionaire Trump onto the debate stage with a bunch of their, their candidates because they're fucking desperate to try to defeat Bernie. Uh, so, Elizabeth Warren keeps, and, and then he, and then Bloomberg was basically trying to say, like, like, there's not that many, I don't have that many NDAs out, so Elizabeth Warren was like, alright, give me a number, give me a number, give me a number, tell me what, give me a specific number, tell me what isn't too many, right, and he never fucking answered, like, he kept his mouth, sh- he, he just kind of stumbled over himself and didn't really say much. And from what I heard, that that was happening a lot. Like, Bloomberg really got uh, slapped around a bunch, which I have no sympathy for that at all. Like, your fucking stop and frisk program, the awful shit you said about minorities, the awful way that you treated women, you're, you, you constantly keep backing Republicans and you switch your parties around only, only when it benefits you. And you bought your way to the election. You're like, I'm not taking any donations. I can fund this shit myself because I don't fucking need you is kind of the way that he puts it. And, and he's just so fucking arrogant about everything. It's like, I, you know, fuck this guy. Like, I have no sympathy for him. You, you fucking, you, you, you got exactly what you deserve in that situation. Because he's Trump. That's what he is. Bloomberg is just fucking Trump. 
with the with the big D by his name. That's it. And we're supposed to. And and that's again. He's fucking proof that if any blue, if, are you serious? Like, if he ends up getting the nomination and people go and vote blue, no matter who, I think this entire country is going to explode. Because no, you're vote, you're voting for Democratic Trump. That's who fucking Bloomberg is. So no, for fuck's sake, don't vote blue, no matter who. Vote for somebody that has solid policies. Vote for somebody that has ideas. That is. That is bringing progressive idea ideologies into the into the into the conversation. Vote for somebody that actually has real policies that is going to fucking fight for the working class people in this country that have been forgotten. And once again, this is a point that bears repeating: working class people is every identity of people. It's not just fucking angry white dudes. He is Trump, and that's what the Democrats are letting. The, the DNC is letting this guy buy the election. This whole notion that that Bloomberg is like, well, he's better because because he's part of the Democratic Party, even though he's exactly like fucking Trump. Like, it doesn't make it better that just because he's part of the Democratic Party, like that a Trump would be better because because the Trump would be from the has a D by their name or some shit. Like none of that. Oh, when he attacks poor people, does it soften the blow that he's going to reduce fucking food stamps because he's got a D by his name? It's like the same shit that they use against Mayor Pete, right? Mayor Pete, they're like, "Oh, but Mayor Pete, he's gay. He's a gay man." That's a, oh, it, oh, okay. So when when we go to war with Iran because he'll carry that forward or when we uh, justify a coup in another Latin American country does that soften the blow because it's like oh well a gay guy's doing it so it's different so it's like it's more acceptable when gay guys are part of imperialism than when straight people do like when straight people do it it's problematic but when when gay people do it it's like totally cool to exploit the poor and destroy the economy of another country. Totally fucking whatever. Like, that's what... It's this... That's like the news... Yeah, when Mayor Pete... If Mayor... If... If Mayor Pete gets the nom and wins, the new season of Queer Eye is going to be about how to spread imperialism across the Middle East and in Latin America. And everybody's going to be like, oh, what an innovative fucking season. Or are they going to sit there and be like, maybe we shouldn't fucking be in these countries to begin with? So that brings us to the next point, though. Uh, it is, uh, is, is the, can Elizabeth Warren defeat Trump, right? I've, I've, I've seen some people talk about this. I've seen some people post about this. Um, this notion that, uh, well, look at the way that she took on Bloomberg. And if she can take on Bloomberg the, this way, then she can take down Trump because Trump is essentially Bloomberg. Uh, and I, I don't know. For one, um, Trump is not going to stay as silent as Bloomberg did. Like Bloomberg is a bad debater. Uh, I think there's like some reports of just him. Like, when he was running for mayor, he had bad debates and shit, like, that he didn't do very well in. Uh, Bloomberg is just a bad fucking debater. And Trump, on the other hand, is far more bombastic, and he's far more aggressive. Uh, so I would I would be a little concerned whether, whether she would be able to hold up with that or not. Bloomberg didn't come out and do the name-calling petty thing. Uh, he also didn't come out and say a bunch of buzzwords and then use, like, negative aspects of her record against her. Uh, and really, if Elizabeth Warren wants to, like, beat Donald Trump, she's going to have to fucking stay focused on uh, policy and understanding what working class people in America are looking for. And, and how to, like, make sure that everybody is represented within the working class. And I don't particularly think she does an excellent job of that. Uh, and she's also not talking to conservatives, right? Like, like 
I'm pretty sure she's come out and made that statement. I don't need to fucking talk to conservatives. They've they, a bunch of the Democratic, all the DNC candidates have come out and basically made the statement of, I don't need to talk to conservatives. They're not my base. And it's like, no, if you're going to be president, guess what? They kind of fucking are. Uh, and I don't think she has. And I don't think she wants to consider it that way. So she's pandering to like the, her, the people that are already kind of supporting her or already decided to vote blue no matter who anyway. So it's, 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 I, I don't see her being able to hold that level of fervor and that confidence when she goes against Trump, who's far more aggressive and bombastic. Hey, thank you for tuning into that uh, uh, that video. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, please hit that like button. Please subscribe, and uh, you know, make sure you're uh, getting updates on when I release videos. I release videos every single week. Uh, I have uh, multiple different types of podcasts. Uh, the video you just watched is called Road Reflections. Uh, it's a kind of looser uh, video series that I do where I talk about current events. And, uh, and some individual news stories and ideas and topics that I don't think get discussed in the mainstream. Uh, if you want a more written, concise, uh, focused version of it, uh, I, I do a, a video series called Fork Full of Noodles, uh, where I talk about big ideas in, uh, in, in longer formats, uh, and usually that involves multiple parts. Um, I'm going to have an interview podcast called Taboo Table Talk, where I talk to comedians, musicians, activists, journalists, uh, politicians, anybody of interest, uh, any conversation that you, they're, you're not going to hear on the mainstream. You're not going to see them on, on uh, any of the corporate news outlets. They are, they are talking about the real deep shit. Uh, and part of that is also The Dispatch, which is another current events, uh, like more timely current events. Uh, thing. So that's what happens on this channel. So if you enjoyed that, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you like the page, make sure you get in the notifications for all these, uh, all of the content that I put out. Uh, but if you enjoy any of the content that I put out, if you enjoy the videos that I'm, I'm putting up, the, the subject matter that we're talking about, there's a very good chance that you'll enjoy my live stand-up comedy. And I'm currently on tour. I am touring through the Deep South and the Midwest. Uh, so... If you are in Denton, Texas, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Dallas, Texas, Austin, Texas, Houston, Texas, New Orleans, Louisiana, uh, Biloxi, Mississippi, Memphis, Tennessee, St. Louis, Missouri, I am coming to your cities in uh, the next two weeks. So go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Grab your tickets, RSVP to the shows. Come on out, come hang out with me. It's uh, it's always a really fun time uh, to to meet people that want to get weird and esoteric and talk about the deeper uh, deeper issues, deeper ideas. Uh, always fun to do that. And uh, while you're on my website, you can check out all of my past stand-up comedy albums, and you can become a patron over at Patreon.com/slash/KrishMohanHaha to uh, help support. Uh, and be a people sponsor of all of the content that I put out on a regular basis and to increase the quality and quantity of all of the, uh, the videos and podcasts that I put out. Uh, but uh, if you can't, that's okay. All of my stuff is constantly available for free. Anyway, uh, uh, by donating, it would just be an additional token of appreciation to kind of show solidarity and support. Uh, but uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you guys so much for, uh, for, for supporting my work, my endeavors, and my projects. And uh, hopefully we'll see you on, on the next one. See you on the road, guys. Take it easy.